Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Albert, and I'm a first-year graduate student advised by Professor Isanovich. And today, I'll be talking to you about debugging software on RISC-V. QMU has definite advantages, such as being faster. But for debugging, you might want to start with Spike. For, um, and here are the couple reasons why. First of all, it's uh, completely deterministic. And, so you, and also, because it's simple to understand, you can get reliably correct execution. Right? It's just it's essentially an interpre interpreter, and it executes one instruction per cycle. That's its abstraction. And you also get high visibility of, ar of architectural state, which I'll explain later when we go through the interactive mode of Spike. And, you, and it's also easy to obtain instruction traces, which you can compare against um, traces from your actual hardware, for example. And in interactive mode, you can also single step through instructions. Now, there are also definite disadvantages with Spike. First of all, it's deterministic, which means that you can't really debug concurrency bugs there. And it has no knowledge of higher level software abstractions. So when you have things like preemptive multitasking or multiple virtual address spaces, such as within an, uh, an operating system, then there's no way to directly debug user level processes very easily. So Spike, as I mentioned before, it, it comes with an interactive mode, which you can either enter by passing the dash D flag to its command line, or you can send control C while it's executing. Um, so on the left screen, uh, you can see like by pressing enter, I can single step through the execution. It's uh, executing VM Linux right now. Okay, um, so let's get back to a particular point. Okay, and in debug mode, you can have a set of very simple commands to inspect the architectural state. For, for example, you have reg, which gives you the value of register as you would expect. Um, you can either give it an ABI name or a numerical index. There are also commands to um, inspect the floating point registers based on the format. So if, for example, if I type in reg core zero um, RA, then of course it'd be zero right now because, and then, but after the JALR instruction, and we, which we call like memcopy, for example, um, then you would see, Zero or A would be 2048, which actually matches our intuition because that would be the instruction after this shell R, which we return to. Okay, so other commands, um, you have mem to inspect the memory contents. Um, so if you give it a core ID, I believe it will use the, uh, for if the core is configured to use an MMU at the moment, then, you, then it will understand the virtual address. Otherwise, if you omit the core ID, then um, the address will be interpreted as physical. There is also a string, which just prints out a null terminated string, like in the C style. And there is also a looping mechanism. So this spike doesn't really support breakpoints right now, but you can use this mechanism to get to a particular point of execution. So say until PC, um, so we want to execute until we return from that function, which we just called, you just do until PC 0x248, and yes, um, continue off where we left. So there's also R, which is to resume execution verbosely, in which it'll print out the instruction trace, or RS for run silently. So if we just continue execution, you could see that it's going, going, and then it eventually dies. Hmm, well, why is that? So, um, as a brief case study, I would just focus on how we would use Spike to debug Linux, for example. Um, Spike was very useful in the initial port because back then we didn't really have a stable GCC and glibc. So, I mean, I could give you many like war stories, but you have to come to me for details afterwards. It's too long to mention here. The reason why the kernel can be efficiently debugged under um, under Spike is that the kernel virtual address the kernel is mapped to into every virtual address space above page offset. So the, the mapping is consistent no matter what task you're currently executing. So maybe some of you would be bringing up Linux on uh, a board. And I would just like to pass on a few pointers that I find very useful. The first is config early print K. So Linux comes with a bare bones console driver. Right now it um, uses HTIF, but you can very easily substitute your own um, hardware device, such as a UART. In essence, it's just the bare minimum to get a string 
like passed to the outside world. And it's very useful because um, this is the only way to retrieve the console output before the TTY subsystem is fully initialized, and it comes much later in the boot process. Uh, the second option which you might want to enable is config frame pointer, because without frame pointers, the, you don't really have a very accurate stack trace. Um, so the frame pointer right now is um, shared with, is located in the S0 register, and we can do very reliable backtraces because, well, we always use S0 as the frame pointer, and that the, um, when we store S SP on the stack frame, it's a fixed offset from the top of the frame. Also, it's, um, we don't have any branch lay slots, so if you actually want to do any um, like runtime code analysis, then it makes it easier to apply heuristics. Um, the next info, it doesn't really affect execution, but you can also compile like dwarf for debugging information into the kernel, and that gives you like a way to correlate the uh, assembly instructions with source level, line, and um, function name, for example. So as a brief demo, we can, for example, we, uh, the kernel is somehow faulting at this particular EPC. And we can run, uh, okay. so this uh, adder to line utility is very useful. You give it a, a, an executable and also the address you want to translate and it'll give you the line number. So basically, the function is internal create group, and here is the location of the source. So if we open that up, so it's faulting somewhere here. And maybe you want to debug a little bit further, let's try to print out a stack trace before it tries to reference any pointers. Okay, so that might take a while. So, and also the object dump companion supports dwarf debugging information. So if you pass in the dash capital S flag, it'll also overlay, it, it'll also overlay the sources with the assembly instructions. So it's a little bit more e easy to use than added to line if you have lots of um, addresses which you want to look up. So while we're waiting for that to finish, I will briefly discuss the proxy kernel. So if you can get your user level program to fit in a self-contained kernel, then you can use a proxy kernel to debug user level processes with Spike. And okay, so why use a proxy kernel if you have Linux available, for example? Well, if you want to get a tractable waveform dump, you don't want the first trillion cycles or so to be taken up by the Linux boot process. So it's very nice to get to the um, actual point of the user level execution without you know, having your waveform cluttered by all these extraneous um, instructions. Also, the major feature is that, yes, the proxy kernel does support printf, which most programmers like to use for face debugging, and it has dependence on minimal infrastructure. So for example, like if the dynamic linker doesn't work, then you might want to try first with the proxy kernel, because if you were to use GDB, GDB might not, GDB itself relies on dynamic linking, so you would have a sort of uh, chicken and egg problem there. All right, so the kernel finished compiling, and then we could just run. Well, we do get a stack trace, and the trace before we fault, we see that sysfs create group. Uh, yes, so internal create group is what we execute. So yes, uh, the addict line is indeed accurate. All right. So for user level debugging, assuming your, the kernel is stable and the dynamic linker is also reasonably stable, then you want to use GDB to debug user level programs natively. So as, we, as was mentioned yesterday, the original RISC-V port to GDB was contributed by BlueSpec. Um, but recently at UCB, we have started tracking upstream the unified binutils GDB repository because we have a newer binutils that provides a newer version of BFD with the newer ABI. 
uh, and specifically, I added core debugging, the core debugging target, so you can now load core dumps into GDB and get a stack trace. And also Linux native support, so you can run GDB inside your target instead of remotely over the serial protocol. Okay, so there are a couple of intricacies involved with um, getting core dumps to work, but I guess like if you have any, if you're working with any RISC-V extensions and say you have extended register state, these are basically the steps you would need to do in order to get the state stored inside the core dumps to inspect later on. So basically you want to, you want to add some arch dependent handlers in the Linux kernel to dump out the state to the uh, .node section of the core dump, which itself is an ELF file and maybe fiddle around with BFD to actually understand, convert the node section into pseudo sections so GDB can then ext extract the opaque data and, and fill the, um, the inferior, which is its notion of the state of the target machine. So as a, as a demo, then I prepared this, um, this root image with GDB in it. So RISC-V, GMU, Linux, To make this more interesting, I would just SSH over. Um, the image is running with I.O. drivers, so we have network support. Okay, uh, I have this very simple program, a board.c. What it does is just gets the process's own PID and then sends itself the SIGA board signal, which would cause a core dump. If we turn on um, C unlimited, which, uh, Just basically fiddles around with the uh, resource limit of the core dump, so we get a full core dump. Now, if we run abort, yes, we get a core dump here, which we can load in GDB. So, yes, here's a backtrace. Um, as one would expect, we died at kill, and also we get abort, um, the line numbers from abort, because I compiled with the dash G flag to GCC. Now to make things a little yet more interesting, let's try Python and then import OS, do the same thing, send ourselves a kill signal. So let's also load that into GDB. And we get a much deeper stack. It's Python, it's running a ton of code just to you know, kill itself. And you can do info shared to get the list of shared libraries along with their addresses to which they're mapped, and also info reg to take a look at the register state before I enter the kernel. So all this is, uh, I have my own repository right now. It's not yet, I haven't yet sent a pull request to the uh, blue, rest, blue spec guys. But uh, yeah, I'm still working on p support, so I hope to be able to you know, attach a live process to GDB and debug it interactively. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you.